Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is j Dub here. I'm going to bring you a main tanking guide for the Morrowind patch. So what's going to happen is I'm going to go over basically the whole nine yards. I'm going to go over skills, attributes, well, you know, the weapons, uh, weapon enchants, all that stuff. I'm going over everything, right? Top to bottom, everything. So if there's something that you wanted me to go over that I did not cover in this video, go ahead and leave a comment below and I'll reply to those accordingly and as fast as I can. So without further ado, let's go right into the gear setups. So right now we're in five piece Alkosh and I have three piece jewelry, two piece weapons. So as far as the enchants go on the jewelry, what I found best for me is I run one magic recovery and then two shield play and chance which the shield play just reduce um, the bash and the blocking it's this well all it does uh, it's, it's a really good enchant for tanks uh, but the magic recovery the extra magic recovery is pretty nice too if you feel that you need more magicka go ahead and put two magic recoveries on and then one shield play or if you feel like you're taking a lot of, uh, if you feel like your stamina is getting wasted a lot, then just put on three shield play. Either way, it's it's totally fine. So let's go ahead and look at what Alkosh does. So what Alkosh does, the two piece set is going to give you weapon crit, which is eh, okay. Three piece minor slayer, four piece weapon damage, eh, whatever. Well, what you're looking at is a five piece set. When you activate a synergy, you send a shockwave from your position that deals physical damage and additional physical damage over 10 seconds. It also reduces the physical and spell resistance of any enemy hit by, by it should be by it, anyways, by, by 3,010 seconds. Anyways, anyway, I suck at English, whatever. Anyway, so the, the key words in here, shockwaves, shockwave, and then reduce physical and spell resistance, right? So let's look at this from a tanking view, right? Alkosh, right? Say this is the boss right here, this little fire pit, right? Say you're facing this way for some weird reason, and you activate Alkosh. What that's, excuse me, what that's going to do is that's going to send a shock wave, which is basically a cone, right? Cone's going to go this way, and then this way, right? It's going to, you're going to be the, you're going to be the tip of the, the triangle more or less. It's going to spread this way and this way. That's what it means by the shock wave. It doesn't mean like anything around you or, or it's going to hit like everything around you. It's going to hit whatever's in front of you and whichever way your character is looking, okay? So if you're looking at the boss and you get an energy, a synergy, and you activate it, then it's going to hit the boss. But if you're looking this way and you activate the synergy, it's not going to happen. Okay? So let's, let's get back over here. All right. So that's what the five piece does. Just keep that in mind when you're activating your synergies. That you want to always be looking at your, ad, your group of ads and or your boss that you're fighting. So that way that you can, you can hit them with the Alkosh. So the other five piece set that I'm wearing is going to be uh, Ebon armor. If you're a tank and you've been tanking for a while, you know what Ebon is. Uh, Eb Ebon is a really good set. The two piece set gives you max health. The three piece set gives you max health. The four piece gives you healing taken by 4%. And then the five piece set, which is really what you're there for. It just increases your max health by 1100 for you and up to 11 other group members within 28 meters. 28 meters is a huge radius that they have in the game, and it really helps out your group. Because a lot of times the DPS, when you if you're pugging or if you have DPS on your guild that you guys are trying, you guys are about to do a trial with, it just doesn't have um, the full Undaunted nine, and they'll come in with Undaunted seven, six, eight, whatever. And they're going to be looking at like about 16k health, if not lower, if not higher. Um, so what Ibn does is that's going to boost them up by 1k. And that's not the reason why. The reason why is it's going to boost the entire group's 1k health. So 
the regular DPS is going to have about anywhere from 18 to 19k health. And that's going to boost them up to 19 to 20k health. Um, so it's a really good set to have as a main tank because you're always going to be with the group. As for an off tank, depending on certain trials, yes, you can run this as an off tank. Just depending on what trial you're running and how, and the reason you can dictate who's going to wear Ebon, it's almost always going to be the main tank, but who's always going to be close to the group. That's who you want wearing Ebon, okay? And as far as Alkosh, then th as far as Alkosh goes, you, you really want both tanks wearing Alkosh. Um, but I'll get into other sets later on in a different video on what you can, what other sets you can use as an off tank and or as a main tank. So the traits that you want to look for as far as Ebon pieces goes is and the shields. Here's the top. Here's the top four that you want to look for. You want to look for sturdy pieces. You want to look for infused divines and reinforce that is the only four that you want to look for for end game pve content and you may ask yourself why or it may be self-explanatory to some but you don't need in pin and you don't need any of the other ones sturdy is probably the best right now and the reason why is because what what zoss has done is when you're holding block and you're taking damage they increase the amount of stam you are using to block those attacks. So, sturdy, pie sturdy pieces are really good because it reduces the block cost by 4%. And it helps out tremendously. I have three pieces on my body, and then I have three pieces reinforced. And I'm going to be really honest with you. I was tired of firing, farming Ebon, so I literally got lucky and got three pieces. I kept three pieces and then said whatever i'm not farming anymore and i have three reinforced but if you want to farm it and you like farming it then go ahead and get your your full sturdy pieces if all you have is divines and fuse then then use it honestly i've tanked all this stuff in infused i tanked it on pc and infused it was easy i've tanked it on divines it's it's still easy um but uh, what would really, um, but for my for my taking, uh, you know, for my taking video, I'm just gonna show you what I personally use every day, uh, more or less, on every trial other than vet halls, and I'll do a separate video for vet halls. But this is like no BS. This is exactly the stuff that I wear, and I'll go over the skills too of what I wear, the CP, everything. Like uh, this is a no BS video of what I what I use. So, um, so like I said, I use this, uh, you know, sturdy on my, uh, on my boots, reinforced on my legs, excuse me, reinforced on my legs. I have sturdy on my waist and reinforced on my chest. Now your two piece blood spawn is what you're going to be using. You don't need to use anything else, all right? You don't need to use Lord Warden. You don't need to use Chudin. You don't need to use Malibeth. You don't need to use Engine Guardian unless your healers suck and they can't throw you anything. Or you're just not that good at self-sustaining, then then screw it. Use Engine Guardian. You know, I don't recommend it, but if you're first time tanking in dungeons, I would say go for it. Try it out. But may, honestly, get used to wearing Bloodspawn because in-game trials guilds, that's what you're gonna want. You're gonna want that up. You're gonna want that ulti gain for a um, upkeep of your warhorn. All right. So what does Bloodspawn do? Well, Bloodspawn gives you one piece stand recovery, which is kind of not really that useful, and because well, the only time you gain stamina back um, while you're blocking is from orbs or shards, which they share the same synergy. Igneous shields and the Constitution passive. When you when you take damage, you get some uh, you get some stam magical back. But other than that, that's really the only time you're gonna be getting it back. So that's orbs and shi orbs and shards, igneous and Constitution. So igneous shields is what I'm going for when I say igneous. So anyways, what does it do? Uh, anytime you take damage, you have a six percent chance to generate fifteen ultimate and increase your physical and spell resistance by six thousand for six seconds 
That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's a pretty good set. The 15 ultimate is really good, and, and you you and you gaining physical and spell resistance is also a really good, uh, really good thing. So it's it's a really good two piece set. And then also what I'm what I am wearing as far as medium or heavy armor, I'm wearing six heavy and one medium. All right, that's what I'm wearing. As you can look at my uh, head, I'm wearing an infused trait on it. So, also uh, again on my gear, everything has health on it, max health. So this is what everything on max health looks like. So let's get into shields and weapons. Um, so what I have for my back shield, my second bar, is gonna be divines and. Here's the reason why. I mainly have magicka abilities on this bar, so I feel like I need I would need a little bit of magic recovery on this bar. And plus I didn't get an infused shield anytime when I was farming it, so divines which is the next best thing that I got. So that's why I have divines on the back bar. I would feel like I need more magic recovery on my back bar when I'm on it than I would on my front bar. That, that's just preference. That's just what, you know, two cents that I thought of. So, again, I have divines on my back bar, infused weapon on my back bar. I have infused shield on my front bar and infused weapon on my front bar. Now, the entrance that I'm wearing on my weapons are crusher, and you always always want to wear crusher on your weapons if you are tanking main or oft and the reason why it reduces the target's physical and spell resistance by 1946 for five seconds now this is just with the infused trait let's look at what purple looks like 1622 let that sink in for a second You'd rather have the higher crusher than the lower crusher. Now, if if all you had was in, if all you had was um, precise charge, anything like that, if if all you have is only two Alkosh weapons and they're just crap traits or they're just like precise or sharpened or anything like decisive, whatever, then 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 can then look at what your what you have so if you have decisive right De and de decisive pretty much like anytime you gain ultimate you gain one extra one right put that on your front bar because you're going to be on your front bar that much keep your crusher up um and you're probably looking at it like damn like i only have five seconds to apply crusher each time well applying crusher every five seconds isn't that hard when you puncture when you heavy attack you apply crusher and you have tons of time during boss fights to heavy attack and apply that uh, pierce armor. So don't let that don't let that fool you. You know don't let that worry you at all uh, by any means for the five seconds. So right now let's go ahead and look at the skills that I'm using as far as my main bar setup, and then I'll tell you what your flex spot would be in certain trials as well. So as far as main bar goes, I'm wearing I have on um, Pierce Armor, I have Balance, Absorb Magicka, Igneous Shields, Heroic Slash, and then I have Aggressive Warhorn. Now let's go over why I have them the way I have them, right? So Pierce Armor. Basically what it does, it does a little bit of physical damage and it taunts the enemy for 15 seconds. That's your go-to right there to taunt if you're up close, right? Main thing what you're looking for other than the taunt is the very bottom. It affects, um, it hits the enemy with major fracture and major breach. It just basically reduces their physical and spell resistance by 12 seconds. Now this stacks with the Crusher Enchant. So you got 19, 1900 plus 5200, right? Just keep that in mind. On top of the Alkosh. It when you activate it so that's a bunch of resistance being lowered just by you all right so this is really a um you know your go-to taunt you know more or less this is your stamina taunt all right balance balance is a new skill that a lot of people don't know about as far as taking goes and some do and some don't 
Basically, what it does is you sacrifice health in exchange for magicka. All right, it also gives you a major resolve and major reward for 23 seconds. And if you guys know what that does, it just increases your physical and spell resistance by 5280. All right. Now, the kicker is, is you cannot heal yourself for four seconds, but you can receive healing from other players. Okay. Now you're probably wondering, like, oh, well, why aren't you using, why aren't you using hard and armor? Like, what, what are you doing with your life? You're, you're so bad. Well, look at it like this. Hardened armor gives you major resolve, major ward. Gives you the same exact thing for 20 seconds, except this one gives it for 23 seconds. Yeah, you also gain a damage shield equal to 15% of your max health for 3.5 seconds. You know, that's all good and stuff, but honestly, with the slight changes and a little bit more in the health, uh, health build tanks, a little bit more in the health build tanks, um, this this balance is, is gonna um, is gonna be better for you if you are not good at keeping with resources. Me personally, I just like it because it makes tanking ten times easier, and I would rather make my life easier than it harder. So basically, what you're gonna use balance for is just to gain magic back. That's all you're doing, and it's not really that op. It's it's honestly it's a good skill, but it's it's not like an amazing skill. Basically, let's let's eat some food right quick and I'll I'll show you. So here we go. This is what the normal magic I have. You know, you hit it a few times and bam, you're up. I gotta read. There you go. Okay, here you go. Fourteen point seven k stam. Waist all the way down. Hit it twice, I'm back up. That's like 10k. Well, actually, it's like 11, 16, whatever. About 11k. Almost about 11k. Anyways, long story short, balance is a really good skill that you can use to gain Magicka back. Okay? And let's look at the... For one-handed seal, let's go ahead and look at the, um, the passes right quick. So I'm kind of going over myself right quick. Um, anyways, uh, reduces your stamina cost of your one hand shield abilities by 10%, reducing the cost of blocking by 36%. Really good passive here. Increase your weapon damage by 5%, the amount of damage you block by 20%. Also, reducing the block is really good, okay? Improves your standard bash attacks. Bashing deals 100% additional damage and costs 40% less. That's also a really good passive because you're constantly having a bash, you're constantly having a block, so that, those are really good passives. Increase the amount of damage you can block from projectiles and ranged attacks by 15%. You know, that's another good passive because there's a lot of times you're tanking uh, ranged bosses like Racket or because he sends projectiles at you. Um, uh, there's a lot of bosses out there that, that send projectiles at you, and there's a lot of ads that do that too. And so this this really helps out this 15% mitigation. So the last one, increase your movement speed while blocking by 60%. That's also nice because there's a lot of times that there, there's a lot of times. So let's say that um, on the twins or vet halls of fabrication on the on the fourth boss on vet halls of fabrication. There's times when you're going to have to swap bosses, and there's there's also times that you, when you're swapping bosses, you're either going to have to hold block or do the or do or do the shield assault. And let's say there's traps all around, and you don't want to get stuck in shield. You don't want to get in a, stuck in a trap and and not use shield assault. Then you hold block and and you run. You walk to the other side. Um, yeah, you can run a dodge roll, but then you're using stam. So just just use those accordingly, and it's kind of like situational basic. So the next skill is balance. Let's just go down to the mages guild and see really what these passes can do for you. So again, we looked at this skill. It sacrifices about 9k health in exchange for 5k magicka. Gives you major resolve, major reward, 23 seconds. All right. Uh, passive, nothing here. Uh, reduces the magic and health cost of Mage Girl's abilities by 50%. Okay. 
Um, this will increase the duration of your main skill abilities by 10%. There's nothing really you're using that is going to, like, a, uh, that has a duration on it. So. Um, the next will increase your max magic and magic recovery by 1% for each main skill ability slotted. Now, what you can do is you can get main skill 9 to unlock this to 2%. Um, I just haven't done it mainly because I've done it on 11 other characters and I don't feel like getting Mage's Guild 9 on this one. So that's why I have it at 8 and I'd honestly rather keep it at 8 than go to 9 just because I'm that lazy. Maybe when I stop being lazy then I'll get it up to 9. But if you want that extra magic recovery while you have balance on you can go ahead and do that and that'll help out a little bit. All right. And then the Might of the Guild, casting a Magical Ability also has a 50% chance of granting you Empower, increasing the damage of your next direct damage attack by 20% for 5 seconds. Your support, you're not really doing that much damage. Uh, that's just if you're, if you're low on skill points and things like that, just, just look at what can buff the group and help you instead of trying to damage. So the next skill, line, the next skill that we're going to use, the next skill we're going to use is Absorb Magicka. What this does is when you activate it, you absorb up to about 20k damage from your next spell projectile projectile cast at you and healing you for 8% of the magic mag, or max health. Excuse me. I'm all over the place. Um, so this skill right here is really good for bosses like Rat Cat. Um, basically almost any Craglorn trial and V-Maw, more or less. Like, I use this in all Craglorn trials and V-Maw. You really want it in V-Maw, and the reason why is because Ratcat on the last boss, what he's going to do is he's going to do this thing called Machine Gun or whatever people call it. I We call it Machine Gun because it looks like he's shooting a bunch of projectiles at you. Looks like a Machine Gun. Anyways, long story short, what's happening is, is he's shooting a bunch of projectiles at you that are spell damage. And all you do is you sit there, you hold block, you cast an Igneous, and then you, you hit Absorb. And that's going to suck up the damage and heal you as well. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to help out a lot. Uh, it's going to help the healers out a lot. Also, what it does is very at the bottom, while you have a shield equipped... And this ability uh, ability slotted, the amount of damage you can block is increased by 8% and the cost of blocking is reduced by 8%. That's another good buff. It's, a, it's really good. So to keep this on, you, your block your block reduction is like is out the is out the water right now, right? So what other skill are we looking at? We're looking at the Earth and Heart ability, and we're gonna go to Ignea Shield. What this does is uh, call the earth to your defense, creating a damage shield for you and nearby allies that absorb 6,700 damage. Your own damage shield absorbs 100% additional damage. You also gain major mending, increasing your healing done by 25% for 3 seconds. Now, this only goes up to five additional players, so you really only igneous uh, six people, including yourself. So it's it's not that bad. We have two tanks. We're all hitting everybody, and it's it's a really good uh, damage shield. Like, um, so let's say we're on the fourth boss. Just just for example, say we're on the fourth boss of uh, Vent Halls of Fabrication. If you ever seen it or seen me stream it, uh, so I'll hit Igneous Shields when uh, when one of the Kamikaze guys or the Unlock Bars, whatever you guys want to call them, one of the bombers come. He comes running towards anybody, and when he comes running to a player that is right next to me, I like to pop Igneous Shields a few times. That way to keep that to keep that going. So once once when he once when he's about to get hit, and then once when he does get hit, I'll pop it again, and he'll get the shield twice. So he gets that uh, gets that shield on him. So let's look at the passive abilities of Earth and Heart. Increases your increased duration of your Earth and Heart abilities by twenty percent. Okay. Uh, when you cast an ultimate ability, you restore 55 health, magicka, and stam for each point of your ultimate's cost. That that is still a really good and powerful skill. It's re it's still really good for tanks and Argonian tanks. I swear they're like 
the best things out there for survivability and resource management. Casting your Earth Heart ability grants a minor brutality to you and your group, increasing your weapon damage by 5% for 20 seconds. If you are in combat, you also generate 3 ultimate. This effect can occur once every 6 seconds. Now, this, this also works with the uh, mud balls that people throw at you to gain ultimate. So, if somebody throws, one, throws a mud ball at you, you can dodge it and then hit igneous shields. And it will gain your ultimate back for dodging and for using igneous shields. So, keep that in mind. It's also it's, it's a really good uh, really good skill to get uh, stamina back. And this is, what, this is what you use. Igneous shield, this is what you use to get stamina back. When you cast the Earth and Heart ability, you restore 990 stamina. This is where I was going at. So anytime you activate, um, let's use some stam right quick. Alright, I use the Igneous. See that stam go up? Part of it's uh, the, uh, while you're not in combat, the, um, the recovery. But what you see, it goes up uh, 990. Still pretty good. That's what we use to get our stamina back as well. Alright, so the next skill we're looking at is Heroic Slash. Now, why would you equip Heroic Slash? Well, basically what it does is it, it deals some physical damage, but it reduces their movement speed by 60% 12 seconds. Yeah, that's cool. But here's the, here's the, the cool ones down here below. It affects them with minor maim. Reducing their damage done by 15% for 12 seconds. Really good skill. You gain minor heroism, granting you one ultimate every 1.5 seconds for 9 seconds. Minor heroism is really good, and you can keep this up. You'll, you Honestly, if you do this every 9 seconds, you will never lose a minor main from the enemy. You will never let it go. And the reason why you want to get this this going every nine seconds is because that's when it runs out for the one ultimate re region every 1.5 seconds for nine seconds. Okay, so for every nine for every 1.5 seconds for nine seconds, you're gonna get one ulti back just from heroic slash. Also, you're getting an ultimate back uh, every six seconds from igneous shields from the earth and heart uh, ability. So just keep that in mind. Those are those are really good ulti regions just from two skills. Okay. Now let's go ahead and look at the ultimate that I'm using. I'm using aggressive warhorn, and a lot everybody who runs trials or or should know this. But for those that are just not getting into tanking, this is basically what it does. Basically, it just increases you and your allies maximum magicka, maximum stam, and 10% by 10%, and also grants them minor toughness, increasing your max health by 10% and for 30 seconds. So this is going on for 30 seconds, and for in a trial group, you're gonna have a set time to uh, call your warhorn, um, say like every 25 seconds, every 20 seconds, whatever. That's going to keep this minor toughness up and your 10% up the entire 30 seconds. You should probably never run out of this, okay? Um, and the radius is 20 meters, and 20 meters in the game is still a really good, uh, really, far, um, really far radius for this. But here's another one right here. At the very bottom is really good. You and your allies gain major force. Increasing your critical damage done by 15% for 9.5 seconds. That's also going to help your DPS out damaging. It's also going to help out um, your healers with a little bit of healing. A little bit more healing. Because uh, they'll have a chance to crit heals more with, the, uh, with this major force. Anyways, um, so this is the front bar. Now, for Vent Halls of Fabrication, right? Here's... Here, oh, let me get out of this. And here we go. Here is two. Here's two abilities that I swap out on Halls of Fabrication. And here it is, right here. I swap out uh, Absorb Magica for Structured Infantry. Entropy. Um, basically, what it does 
It um, binds the enemy with chaotic magicka, dealing 2737 magic damage over 12 seconds and healing you for 962 health and additional 962 health every 6 seconds. Yeah, that's okay. It grants major sorcery and increasing your spell damage by 20% for 20 seconds. Yeah, okay, whatever. But the really the, the big thing on the bottom is uh, while slotted, your max health is increased by 8%. Excuse me, anytime you get that a little bit extra health, it, it really helps. So right now I'm at 43, excuse me, 43.6k health, right? Let's go ahead and down and equip it. And now I'm at 45. I think I'm at 46, honestly. Yeah, 46.4. That's pretty nice to get that little bit extra, um, a little bit extra health. It's not too bad. And plus, it also increases your uh, your magic recovery when you have uh, Mage's Guild ability on. So anyways, um, I do swap that skill out, and I do have it on there sometimes. It's totally situational on how you're doing as a group. If you're just having, like, a, a bad raid day, I'll put this on. Uh, but if we're having, like, a pretty decent raid day, then, then I'll actually swap it to invigorating drain and you may kind of be like what the hell here's why consuming enemies life force dealing 2000 magic damage restoring 24 percent of your missing health okay cool beans but the very underneath that generating two ultimate every one second for three seconds there you go you're getting six ultimate every three seconds right there when you activate the drain, the enemy is stunned for six sec for three seconds. This actually works on a lot of the ads. It doesn't work on any of the bosses, but it does work on the twins. Uh, the ads for the twins, not the not the twins, the boss, but the twins ads that come out. It does work for them. But honestly, if you have time to to drain that time, then um, then that's actually not that bad because you're uh, you're gonna get that warhorn off time pretty good. Um, so let's look at the passives for this. Uh, increase your max magica and or excuse me increase your magica and stamina code by 10 percent okay that's not too bad blood ritual you get to bite somebody for free every seven days not too bad whatever uh reduce your damage taken by up to 33 percent based on your missing health while you are below 50 percent health this is a really good uh passive it's actually a really good passive now now keep in mind that this is only through stage three or higher stage three or higher Reduce the severity of health recovery, deter determinant, determinant, and vampirism stages two through four. Another good passive, not that bad. Um, they say that yeah, you're a vampire, you take extra f uh, flame damage, but honestly, being being a tank, and when we go with the CP and everything, it's it's honestly not even. Yeah, don't even listen to that crap. But people will say, well, you're a tank, you should be a vampire. Tell them. Oh, okay whatever and then do your own thing because honestly being a vampire in a tank is not a bad deal i've been a tank since since i started tanking actually um and i didn't even know i was a vampire I totally forgot because i had made this character and just kind of did my own thing and made a healer made a dps you know went back to my healer whatnot and then i came back to this and i was like oh shit i am a vampire okay whatever but actually, I've n I've not noticed any extra damage that I have taken or been taking, like City of Ash, Event Halls of Fabrication, Last Boss. There is n or even Hell Run, the Flame dudes. I I don't notice any damage, extra damage that I'm taking. So whoever tells you not to be a vampire, if you want to be a vampire, go ahead and do it. It's not needed, but if you want to, you can. All right. So that covers the front skill bar setup. Um, so let's go ahead and look at the, um, the back, the off bar. So here is the range time. Now this is good for pulling the ads on these, uh, on the twins on Vmall. Um, if you're trying to line of sight, some of these ads, and, or anything like that that are ranged, uh, this is a good taunt to have and to move them quicker. Quicker. Uh, basically, it deals some magic damage. It forces them to attack you for 15 seconds. 
Yeah, that's that's really honestly it. I mean, it, it does pop a synergy sometimes, and and once we get in the CP tree, people pop in synergies. It gives them like two ultimate or something like that. I can't remember, but we'll look at it. Anyways, uh, given that given that extra synergy proc is is nice for some dps if they want that extra ulti or or healer mainly for a healer or a tank just to pu just to pop that synergy to get a little bit extra um alkosh going or, or something like that so the next skill that we are looking at is going to be green dragon's blood so what does this do all it does is it heals you for 39 percent of your missing health you also gain major fortitude, major endurance, minor vitality, increasing your health recovery, your stamina recovery by 20% and healing received by 80% for 23 seconds. This is a really good self heal. It just, I mean, if, if you're plugging trials or if you're in a new trial or you're new to tanking, definitely put this on. And I honestly have it on all the time just for oh shit moments. There's times that you can take it off and not even wear it at all through trials, and that's totally fine. And I've done it before. Um, but there's times where they were like oh shit moments where like I had to dodge roll a bunch. And, and you, you know, you, you don't always have a perfect raid day. So that's why I always like to keep this one on. And, and just kind of like oh shit moments is more or less what it's for. So let's look at some of the passive abilities. It increases the amount of damage you can block by 10%. Really good. There you go. More block reduction. Increase your healing received by 20% with a Draconic Power ability is active. There you go. Activate that uh, Green Dragon's Blood. Operate it twice. Get that extra heal. Increasing your health recovery by 5% for each Draconic Power. It'll be slotted 15% right now. That's because we have two of them on there. Um, actually, don't we have three? Yeah, I think we have three. Yeah, that's what I thought. We did have three. Anyways, sorry. Just uh, wasn't thinking. Uh, increase your spell resistance by 3300. That's a, that's another little that I mean that's useful. It's a really good passive. Um, this one's a decent passive. I mean, increase health recovery while they're slotted. I mean, that's fine. Whatever. Health recovery is not really. You don't really need a lot of health recovery in PVE because you have healers and stuff like that. It'd be better going into magic recovery. Um, yeah, increase your healing receive. It's it's good. You know you can hit you can hit uh, green dragon's blood, and if you get hit again real hard, you can act activate it again, and it'll heal you even more. It's it's a really good skill, really good passive, and then the block damage really good. So let's just go over the uh, the next two skills, which is choking talents. This is what I like to call another flex spot skill. Um, you won't use this every trial and everything. There's, there's a lot of times you won't ever touch this skill in Trials. But the first boss of them all, excuse me, you will uh, for the cats. The cats to spawn every 20%. You'll definitely use this. Basically what it does is, he, is it holds the adds in one spot for four seconds. Um, it affects the enemy with minor maim, reducing their damage by 15% for seven seconds. That way, it doesn't it doesn't make you have to hit um, heroic slash on each individual ad. If you can talent them, they're already affected by minor maim, and that's really good for uh, the group itself and yourself. Mainly because it reduces that bleed that the cats do on you. Um, while active, while enemies are held, allies may activate an impel to deal 32 additional physical magic and damage. I mean, that's fine. Um, again, anytime you activate a synergy, you're gaining an ultimate if you have your CP set up right. So, and then if a tank does it, you're getting Alkash and you're getting ultimate. So it's just a win-win, honestly. If a uh, tank does it. So the next one we have is Deep Breath. Now this is the one that I've been using quite a bit, and and honestly, it's for vet halls of fabrication. There's there's a lot of ads in there up until you get to the fourth boss that you have to interrupt sometimes, and so this this skill right here really works. It just works really well with some of the ads. A lot of the dwarven spheres, 
you have to interrupt them and you'll see you'll see when when i do a video on them later uh, in uh, like a week or a few days or so uh, but but you'll see anytime you activate this if they're channeling attack or they're trying to cast an ability you can interrupt them stun them and set them off balance for two seconds it's not that bad but it interrupts them from doing it and they won't do it again so and then also after 2.5 seconds you you deal some fire damage to nearby enemies yeah that's cool um here's another kicker right here that anytime you do it you deal some magic damage to nearby enemies and then heals you for 120 percent of, of the damage cost i mean it's not too bad it's not too horrible it's, it's fine for a little bit of, a little bit of health but it's not something you would spam just for health you, you also, you're going to use this, um, or actually, I have been using this and VMAW as well. So, here's here's what I've been doing. What I've been doing is the the renderers, what they do in VMAW is they, they throw their hands back and they start the scream. And if you bash them, it doesn't throw anybody back. But if you do not bash them or if nobody interrupts them, they will throw the entire team back. Even the healers and they and throughout a certain radius and they won't be able to heal you or the group or anything like that. And it does does quite a bit of damage. Not a lot, but it does good damage. So what I've been doing is I've been highlighting the renderers. I've been bashing them, and when I get close to low stamp, I'll swap bars, and then I'll use deep breath anytime that I see them about to use that ability. And you'll see when they do it when I do a video later on um in a few days or not um, you'll see when to activate it and that way you're not constant you're not running out of stam because by the time you would let go block and you would swap to your bar and then you would use deep breath and you would interrupt them that way and by that time if it's not dead then then dps is just not focusing that render or the dps just is, doesn't have good cleave damage or they're just constantly dying and messing around and not paying attention so that, that's a that's a skill that i've been using uh, consistently now but those two set these two skills right here are now your flex spots uh now that you're not really using vigor that much anymore uh i mean i haven't you i haven't had to, had to use vigor in a long time i mean we could still use vigor which vigor is a really good skill let me let me show you what vigor does for those of you who don't know vigor is in the assault tree and what you're going to use is you're going to use echoing vigor basically it just sends out a radius of heals from your stam tree and it's a huge radius let's look how big it is it's almost as big as this arena that i have really big all right and it and it does use a bit of stam um and it's not that much i mean it's 3400 but it's it's not really a deal breaker to use it every so often if you're maintaining i mean you could put it on and hit it every so often if you have pa on but and then pa is powerful assault so we'll get into medium armor um medium armor gear a little later in another video but uh but yeah if you were a powerful assault which um anytime you activate an assault ability you're going to um uh, buff the group with some weapon and, and uh weapon and spell damage but uh honestly i haven't really been using it that lot a lot lately in this trial so it's not really a uh, skill that i've been using um, anyways, let's go to the last skill because these last skills, B, L, B, and R, B, are my flex spot skills. And I can interchange those with anything. So the last one is going to be an unrelenting change. And what that does is all it does is it pulls the enemy towards you, dealing some flame damage, whoop you do But the main thing that you're getting from this is quicker ad pulls. If you can pull ads towards you, it works so much better with the DPS not having to... To range them down if you can if you can pull ads towards you that's going to help the group out because more more times than enough that if you're mean taking you're pulling ads towards you those ads are going to cleave get cleaved down and die but anyways unrelenting grip what it does is it's going to deal some flame damage going to pull the enemy towards you it's going to grant you major expedition increasing your movement speed by 30 percent for six seconds it's also excuse me um, it's also if you can't pull the enemy towards you, it's going to restore 100% of the abilities cost as magicka. 
okay? Um, you, it can't be dodge rolled, but I mean, I don't notice any any abs trying to dodge roll this attack at all. Uh, but anyways, what what I do do, uh, what I do do, what the heck? Uh, what I do use this for is um, uh, for V-Maw, like I use it on the twins a lot. I, I self-chain a lot of the ads. Um, we do have chainers and we do have uh, other people to do that for us. But a lot of the times, one through three ads, I just chain everything myself. And then the frames start to get pretty bad and I'm not able to chain everything myself. Anyways, uh, long story short, when you're trying to rotate, when you have to rotate, right? When the tw when the twins on Vmo go to the prayer phase and you have to rotate, I honestly, what I do is I hit chains on one, on the boss that I'm closest to, and then I run clockwise. I don't even run. I don't even push in the run button. I just I just pull my tri my stick and I turn which way to go and and I'm extremely fast to get to the other side. It doesn't uh, uh, it's not a bad skill to use in that moment in time. So anytime you're trying to go from point A to point B, uh, it's a, it's a really good skill to help you get there. So let's look at the passives. Uh, increase the damage of your burning a poison state status effects by sixty percent. I mean that's cool. Whatever. Um, dealing damage with uh, ardent flame ability reduces the enemy's movement speed by 30% for 4 seconds yeah okay uh, increase the damage of your fiery breath during strikes and dragon standard ability by 3% for duration of 2 seconds yeah okay whatever increase the damage of your flame poison area of effect abilities by 6% obviously there's not really anything in there that's going to help out as far as group wise I mean it does give you a little bit DPS time but honestly, your tank, you're not really worried about DPS, worried about helping the group out and getting ads in as quick as you can towards you and so that they can DPS it. So B, L, B, R, B are your flex spot skills throughout the trials. So with VMA, let's say you're going to do, let's say you're going to do hard mode, right? So let's set up. For hard moon, I would actually probably keep that skill on, and depending on there we go, there we go, good in there. So, and here's I never went over. I'm sorry, I never went over the passive abilities for Undaunted with the Inner Fire. Basically, what it does, anytime you activate a synergy, you restore four percent of your max health, stamina, and magicka, and then there, at the bottom it tells you your current bonus. And then the next one increases your max health, stamina, and magicka by 2% per type of armor, heavy, medium, and light that you have equipped in. So now you have 4%. So, um, so anyways, energy orbs. Uh, basically what it does is it sends a glowing yellow ball at people and it heals them. I've seen it tick for a few K. I've, I've seen it tick for 1, 2, 3K before. Um, so it's, it's actually a pretty decent heal for a tank. Um, but do not rely on it. Anytime you go into lunar phase, if you have to go into lunar phase, or if some of the ads are, or some of the ads, some of the players are like, "Hey, I need magic. I need magic. I'm low on magic. I'm low on stamina. Whatever. Throw throw two orbs out there because you may need or two or three, whatever you can throw, and and help your group out some. And basically, what it does was when they activate it, it explodes. It heals them for like about 4k. Obviously, that can proc. And it does that for two nearby allies and restores 39, 60 magical or stam to them, whichever maximum is higher. Okay. So if they have higher stam, then they'll get higher. If they have higher max stam, then they'll get stam back. If they have higher magicka, then they'll get magicka back. So, um, again, we already looked at vigor. Uh, vigor is actually not a bad skill to use on this, um, depending if you're doing hard mode or not, VMO. Um, also, let's look at uh, Purge. Let's look at Purge right quick since that's another skill that we may be using. Basically, what this does is it cleanses your group group, your group, and yourself by two negative effects and reducing the duration by further negative effects by 50% for six seconds. This is a really good skill, and I've honestly keep this skill on the entire time through Vet Halls of Fabrication because there's a lot of things that you need to cleanse in that trial. And on hard mode... Excuse me. 
cords get wrapped up. Anyways, on hard mode V Maul, you will have this on as a tank to help cleanse uh, the dread stalkers and, and and some of the things that get a t um, things that get applied to your group. Uh, so you you'll you actually use this sometimes. You won't use it all the time, but you will help out the healers quite a bit. Um, and as far as uh, other honorary mentor mentor um, mentions that you can swap out both. Um, so what you can you can swap out the B button, which is structured entropy, the B button, and you can swap out any one of these B O B R B Y skills with stalwart guard stalwart guard basically what it does is it um creates like a lifeline between you and an ally player bonding 30 percent of the damage that they take is instead given to you so 30 30 percent of the damage that they take is going straight to you um so you and the ally also gain minor force increasing your critical your critical strike damage by 10 percent so really good you do not want to apply this to somebody who is already using trap beast unless they are taking that much damage and and they're in position that they have to take that much damage and you have to guard them anyways and it's going to help them out to, to stay alive but honestly you would use this for like a dps increase uh, excuse me uh just keep in mind at the very bottom the bond will remain until you recast the spell or uh move more than 15 meters away from your alley so if he or he or she moves 15 meters away from you uh it, it's gonna break and you're gonna have to reapply it just keep in mind that it does cost 4,000 stam so just use that accordingly uh with with whatever you're taking so let's go ahead and, and just kind of like go up there and, and see what else kind of skills that we can use, if anything. Here's another one from the Fighters Guild. It's called Ring of Preservation. Um, you can interchange them on your back bar. Totally fine. What we use this for is we do use this for some executes. Um, and I'll tell you one, for example, Vet AA Hard Mode. We will use this. Uh, everybody will stack up on the boss once we're in execute phase, which I believe is 16 or 15 percent, maybe 13. But anyways, um, the boss will go into execute phase, and you throw this down there. It's going to mitigate 20 percent, or excuse me, it's going to mitigate 8 percent of the damage taken, and increasing your stamina recovery by 10 percent. So if you have any stam in there, it's going to give them some stam recovery, but mainly it's going to um, it's going to give a minor protection, a minor uh, endurance, or minor protection, excuse me, which is going to uh, reduce the damage that they take. And it really does help out the group, and it's, it's really good for some execute modes. Uh, let's look at some of the passives right quick. So we haven't looked at this one. It allows you to animate, yeah, whatever. Reduce the stamina cost of your fighter's good ability by 15%. Okay, that's pretty good. Um, Slayer increases your weapon damage for fighter girl slotted. Yeah, you're not really doing DPS. So there's no point. Uh, you generate nine ultimate when you kill an undead, danger, or werewolf. I mean, sometimes you get lucky and you get to kill an enemy because the DPS are lazy and you just, you know, you're going to work, you're going to town, you're puncturing the hell out of it, you're croak slashing it, whatever. You know, sometimes you, you get the last hit on it and it's cool to get that nine ultimate. Your fighter kill ability doing additional twenty percent damage to undead. I mean, you're not really using a damaging skill. You're using a pro uh, protection skill, so there's no reason to really uh, use this skill point. Uh, and this one is a Cyrodiil thing. If you do Cyrodiil, then you can put this in there. But I don't do PvP, but so you can put that in there if you if you feel a need to. Let's look at some other skills right quick. Now, Shielded Assault. We didn't really look at this one, but this is an honorary mention because we do use it sometimes if it holds a fabrication on the fourth boss when we have to swap bosses. Basically, what it does is you, you basically, when you hit this button, you run to the enemy that you just hit. And what it's going to do is it's going to put a damage shield um, on you after you hit them, absorb them up to 5,000 damage for 6 seconds. Not a bad skill. It gets you from point A to point B quicker than you can doing chains. So it's it's not a bad skill if you want if you need to get somewhere really quick and you have a limited time to do it then this, this is a good skill to do. Uh, 
this is a this is another decent skill you can use on certain uh, certain pulls if you're not using cow traps. Uh, cow traps is a good skill to use, and I'll go over that one just at the very end of skills. Um, but uh, Cinder Storm is is a decent one. Basically, what it does does some does some flame damage for 18 seconds. Uh, every one second for 18 seconds reduces the movement speed by 70 percent. Enemies remain snared for up to 1.1 second even after leaving the area. It's not a bad skill to use. It's reducing their movement speed by 70 percent. It's not that bad. Uh, it's good for like really big apples that don't you know that you don't really need to use um, uh, choking talons with. So this is a decent decent skill you could use to put on there. I don't ever hardly ever use this, but like one time. Um, so. It's not really, not really needed. Later video, I'll show you when I can use it and when I, when I don't use it. So uh, stay tuned for that. Let's look at some other skills that you could use. I mean, as far as tanking trials, you don't need to put on molten weapons. You don't need, a, you don't need really to morph it or anything like that. Because they're using spell pots and and uh, and uh, yeah, stamp stamp power pots or whatever they're called. I forget what they're called, but to increase their spell and physical damage. So, or excuse me, their spell damage and or weapon damage. So you don't you don't ever need to run this as a tank. Well, at least in trial settings, in dungeons you can put this on. That way they don't waste uh, pots. Hardened armor, you can put this skill on if you're not going to use balance. You can put this skill on. That's not a bad skill. It does the same thing as balance, except it, um, this shield is equal to 10% of your health, and balance doesn't grant a shield. It just takes health away and gives you magicka. So, it's not a bad skill. You can use this. And as far as Ardent Flame, if you do not have a Magicka DK, you can put this skill on and morph it to a Magicka version. That way any any flame damage that attacked it, you know, the single target is going to do extra damage to it, whatever. Um, you can do that, but honestly, if you're not running a Magicka DK in your group, it's not, it's not really needed, but uh, you can't do it. Totally fine. Searing strikes, you. I mean, if you feel like your heals are not that great or, or whatnot, or if you're taking the last boss and axes and you feel like you don't know what to put on and, and you have enough magic recovery and you want to try this out, go ahead and try it out if you want to. Basically, the morph version is any time after 10 seconds, it's going to heal you for some for uh, some of the damage done. Not that, not that bad of a skill, but honestly, I, I'm just doing honorary mentions right now. And that, that's all I'm doing. I mean, skills that you can uh, equip if uh, if you're, you know, depending on whatever you're doing. So you can equip this if you want, uh, whatever. Now, as far as ultimates goes, you're not really going to use anything other than... Um, uh, did I go over Magma Shell? I don't, I don't think I did. So let me go over Magma Shell, and then I'm going to go over Caltrops, and we'll go into uh, CP. So Magma Shell, right? Basically, what it does is uh, nice and molten lava in your veins, limiting incoming damage by 3% for your max health and dealing 578 flame damage to nearby enemies each second for 10.8 seconds. That's cool. Excuse me. But uh, when it's activated, nearby enemy, nearby allies gain a damage shield for up to 100% of their max health for 9 seconds. And I think... If I if I can remember right, this has a this is a radius of about five meters. So if there's nobody in you within about five meters, they're not gonna get the damage shield. And this is this is um you use this for old shit moments in trials. If you, if you're pulling uh, some of the ads out of the room in Vet Sanctum, then then you can pop this um, to your own. Um, if you need it, you can pop it. Whatever it gives ultimate back to. So it's it's not a bad skill. It's actually a really good uh, ultimate to have just on your backboard, just for just kind of like uh, oh shit, you know both healers are down. Uh, just wait a few seconds until your health gets down lower to about half, and then you can pop it, heal yourself back up, and by then they should be up. So let's go down to cow traps. Let's look what that does, and then, and then kind of uh, go from there. And then we'll go into uh, CP. So cow traps. What this does it uses a shit ton of stamp for no reason. But what it does is it deals some physical damage for 12 seconds, every one second for 12 seconds, reducing their movement speed by 30 seconds. 
if uh, this if this is what you need um, during ad pools to slow some ads down, by all means use it. But if you, if you don't need it and you don't need to use some stand for it, then there's no point using it. But it is a, it isn't a bad skill to use. But uh, I I honestly don't use it. I, obviously, I don't even have it unlocked. That's because I don't use it. There's really no point. I mean, our our we have really high damage, so there's really no point in trying to cleave everything or trying to slow anything down. There's really no need. So that's a look at the gear. That's a look at the uh, the skills uh, mixed between like certain things that you can use, flex spots, things like that. So let's go ahead and look at uh, we'll look at CP last. Let's look at potions right quick, and let's look at food. Then we'll go into uh, then we'll go into CP right quick since these are really quick. As far as food wise, I'm always going to be using Tristat food. It just gives you that 4K extra max health, max magicka, max dam. It's really good. It lasts for two hours. It's it's uh it's a really good set to use. Uh, reset. So it's a really good food to use. Uh, so you can use that. Uh, I really wouldn't use anything else. You really kind of want um Tristat food. As far as potions goes, I don't use trash health pots. I do use a crap ton of Tristat pots. It restores 10,000 health immediately. Gives you a little bit of uh, health recovery for 52 seconds. Yeah, whatever. Uh, restores 7k Magicka immediately. Really good. Restores 7k Stam immediately. Really good. And that, uh, though, both of those last for 47 seconds. It's 47.6 seconds. 45 second cooldown. Um... And then I do use Stam Trash Pots. Um, it's just situational base. If, if I'm just always low on Stam for some reason, then I'll just I'll main these. I'll just quickly you know put those on and and, uh, and just use them when needed. And then of course I have my Trash Magical Pots. If I'm constantly using Magicka left and right, then then obviously then I would just swap to Magicka if my Stam and health isn't really being affected that much. Then then I'll just pop those uh, Trash Stam Pots. Um, but yeah, so I'm using the uh, Wither Tree in. Just it's just a tri-step pot, just the last one that you have, um, and your food that's that's uh, uh, CP uh, one hundred and fifty. Um, so let's I m I messed up on the uh, what race I'm in. Obviously I'm Argonian, but here is the reason why I'm Argonian: the fifty percent swimming speed. I'm just kidding. Uh, the the fifty percent swimming speed. Yeah, that's cool. Whatever, but. Uh, here, here, here it is right here. Increase your maximum magicka by 3%. When you drink a potion, you restore 4,600 health, magicka, and stamina. So when you looked at the potions, it's re it's recovering, or it's uh, giving us 7,000 plus the additional 4,000 that we get from this passive ability. That is ridiculous. 11k, I mean, just the top of your head, 7 plus 4 is going to be 11. So you're getting 11k health magicka and stamp or excuse me magicka and stamp 10k plus four or 10 plus four it's gonna be 14 so you get 14k health back that is a lot it, it is crazy amount so let's look what else do we got uh, increase your max health by nine percent that's hella that's hella cool yeah i'll take that uh and poison g's resistance by 14 if i yeah okay vet sanctum whatever poison damage vet sanctum increase your healing done and healing received by five percent awesome what am i looking at i'm looking at this one right here green dragon's blood and then this one if you have it energy orb whatever but those are really good passives all right now let's go to what everybody's probably been waiting for the amazing cp setup I don't think it's amazing. I just think it works for me. Um, so what I have in the green tree, Warlord, 56. Reduce the cost of break fee by 20%. You go one lower, you're at 19. You go one higher, you're at 20.5. Or if you go one higher from 20.15, 20 20 you're just wasting it. So this is what I have it in. Um, 
When you use bash, you have 33% chance to reduce the enemy's movement speed by 20%. Cool. Increase your crafting inspiration gain by 20%. Whoop de doo. Uh, 32 in tenacity. This is where you get your heavy attacks, your stand back. Um, I, when, I, when I was testing this, it seemed like I got more stand back than I did, um, than I did Magicka. And I think this just goes off of which is uh, which, which may be higher. I'm not sure. It's just I'm not, I'm not actually sure, but it just seemed like I always got more stand back than I did uh, I did uh, Magicka. But anyways, this supposedly increases the magicka and stam. Your fully charged heavy attacks restore by eight percent. Again, like I said, I, I always got more stam back than I get magicka. You have a ten percent chance to gain a double double the yield from norm resource nodes, whatever. Here, here's where I was talking about with the ulti regen. So anytime you activate a synergy uh, ability, you generate two ultimates. So well, that's really good. It's really good for tanks as well when you already have blood spawn in your rock slash and getting those going. So here's what I have. A Shadow War 66 with a 22% reduce the cost on block. It just seems it works for me. 56 in the tumbling. Reduce the cost of roll dodge by 20%. Why the fuck do you have roll dodge in there? Well, here's the reason why. Because there's times where you're tanking and you're in like a, a tight spot where it's like, damn, both healers are down. My other tank is down. I'm low on health. I'm low on Magicka, but I have a full deal of Stam. Dodge roll. Dodge roll the heavy attacks. Once you get once you get better at knowing the mechanics, you can easily just dodge a little this, those my heavy attacks and dodge those, those the dodge roll those heavy hitting attacks, and that way it'll save time for DPS to raise healers and our off tank. The passes increase the amount of gold you find from treasure chests and safe boxes. That is amazing, ish. Not really. Anyways, uh, reduce the cost of repairing your armor by ten percent. If you're not using repair kits, this is really good. Treasure hunter, we all know what that does. Just increase the quality of items you find in treasure chests. Uh, when you kill an enemy with heavy attack, you become invisible for two point five seconds. This effect occurs once every five seconds. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. I have 100 in a bless. Increase your healing done by 15%. Now this there's now this tree right here, the apprentice, is only going to affect your magic abilities. So if you're using energy orbs and or green dragon's blood, this tree right here and this uh, this passive uh, affects that. So increases your healing done by 15%. Increasing the damage and healing of your critical strikes with magic abilities by 23%. It's still pretty good, right? 23% is going to increase your healing done, right? So look at some of the passives. Um, when you block three spells within 10 seconds of each other, your next magic ability you use within five seconds will always be a crit. Cool. Increase the spell critical. Spell critical is definitely going to increase your healing crits. Done. When you drink a potion, the cost of your next amount of magic ability used within seven seconds is reduced by eighty percent. Not that bad. If you if you feel like you uh, you're getting low on health, but all you have is trash pots, pop a trash pot, and then pop the green dragon's blood. It's going to reduce the cost by eighty percent. It's going to be good. When you kill an enemy, you have a 20% chance to restore 1,400 Magicka for up to three friendly targets within two and a half meters of the enemy. Really, really small radius. What do I have here? I have 30. Can I get to it? There we go. 30 points into Physical Weapon Expert. Increases your damage done with light and heavy attacks for two-handed, one-handed shield, dual wields, and bow weapons by 17%. Cool. Actually, let me go over here first. Uh, when you block a heavy attack, your next light attack used within 7 seconds, deal 30 additional damage. Cool beans. When you block an attack, you have a 15% chance to deal 3,000 physical damage to the enemy. This effect can occur once every 5 seconds. That's not bad. I mean, it's an extra 3k DPS passively. Why not? And nothing in this tree. Here is the tree of all trees. Ironclad, 56. Reduce your damage taken against direct damage attacks by 
Really good passive skill. When you bash, when you use bash, you have a 20% chance to heal for 2596 health. That's really good. I mean, that extra, extra bit of healing isn't that bad. When you use a road dodge, your physical and spell resistance decrease by 660 for 3 seconds. Again, when I was saying we're old shit moments, you need a roll dodge, this this right here helps out. Oh, oops. I don't know why I kept going. I meant to hit RB. Anyways, so what I have is I have 49 hardy, 49 elements of defender, and 56 thick skin. So hardy. Reduce your damage taken from physical poison and disease damage by 11%. Okay. Reduce your damage taken from any elemental damage. Frame, frost, shock, and magic. Thick skin. Reduce your damage taken from damage over time effects by 20%. Pretty good. That synced them. There we go. Any other dot, more or less. Um, when you take any elemental damage, including oblivion damage, equal to 30% of your max health, you restore 3465 magicka. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds. Now, this is not a bad passive. So, say you get hit really hard. Excuse me. Say you get really, you get hit really hard, right? And you get hit for more than for equal of 30% of your max health, right? So, say you just get hit, bam. What's gonna happen? And you're low on magicka. Oh no, what's gonna happen? Well, if you're if you were completely at like 1k magicka, you're gonna get 3465 magicka back. If it's not within the 10 seconds, you know what I mean? So you can quickly hit um Green Dragon's Blood. And that's gonna put you back almost, if not full health, probably about 75, 80, 80% health back. So you're good to go. Increase the amount of any shield you equip by 75%. Okay. When you deal direct critical damage, you heal for 396 health. This effect can occur once every 5 seconds. Alright. Not, not bad. Extra, a little bit of extra healing. It's okay. When you use a break free, the cost of your next stamina ability used within 5 seconds is reduced by 80%. Again, it's, uh, it's not a bad, that's not a bad uh, passive right there. And then we have none in the other tree. So anyways, I, I, I'll do more videos later on. And the videos that I'm going to be doing are, are going to be mainly for tanking. Going to help you. Excuse me. Anyways, uh, it's these videos that I'm going to be doing for my channel are only going to go towards tanking. What it's going to what it's going to go on is going to be taking like what gear what what uh skills that i use for what individual trial each individual boss and each individual ad pool so just uh keep that in mind it's only going to be about tanking if uh you know what I, I did forget one skill please forgive me i forgot two actually um this is another skill that you can use uh vet hell raw you use this skill. Uh, I've used it in, in tons of speed runs. If you're going for speed runs, you're going to put this skill on. It costs 7,900 stam. Basically, all it does is it gives you major expedition and, and major gallop, which increases your movement speed by 30%, and anytime you're mounted by 30%. It also grants immunity to snares and immobilization, removing any applied, any already applied. The effect ends if you cast any spell on an enemy or ally. All right, and then the, the few passives that I forgot were alchemy, and what you really want to get is the uh, this one right here when using potion, re the resulting effects last thirty percent longer. So just go ahead and power level this thing up. If you have somebody in your guild that can do that, just go ahead and uh, see if you can do that, and um, I'm sure they'll help you out. But uh, but yeah, it doesn't take long to do it. Outcast actually has a really good video up on how to do it. Um, so, yeah, just make sure that you have alchemy up and you have enough skill points for alchemy. Um, other than that, yeah, that, that completes my video for the main tanking guide for Morrowind Patch. Hopefully this helped you out some, if not um, a lot. Um, those of you who are veteran players or just new to tanking, hopefully this kind of helped you out on, on what to kind of look for as far as skills, as far as ulties. What kind of food you should be eating? What kind of potions you should be thinking about looking at? What kind of gear 
as far as evident owl cost, you can do this in you can do this all in uh, Kraglin trials and or um, the Halls of Fab and V Maw. But uh, this is mainly for the Kraglin trials and V Maw, and I'll do a separate video on Vet Halls of Fabrication. Anyways, I hope this video helps you guys out. Um, if you if you think I missed something or if you want to see me do something else, go ahead and leave a comment below, and I will try to get I will reply to you accordingly and and as much. Um, if I have time, I will try to re re, uh, reply to you as quick as I can. Uh, i got a lot of stuff going on, but I, I will reply to each individual comment that is left um, if it, it pertains to the video itself and or about tanking. Um, so, uh, again, if you need to, if you want to see anything or if you think I missed something, go ahead and leave the comments down below. Uh, thank you all for taking the time to watch this video. You guys have.